Hello everyone. Now we will tell you about North Korea, the most unusual state on the planet in terms of protecting its values. It is strictly closed, there is little information about it, and what does come out is subject to serious editing by the governing bodies. To understand why there is a regime in the North, look at its history, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and leave comments, as well as click the bell icon so you don't miss our new videos. Brew some tea, grab the pancakes, and let's go. What do you think is the origin of the isolationist regime in the DPRK until 1941? North Korea and South Korea were colonies of Japan. After World War II, the northern part of the peninsula came under the control of the USSR. South Korea came under the influence of the United States. States failed to reach an agreement, resulting in the formation of two governing bodies on the Korean peninsula and eventually two countries. They originally had different ideological foundations. A labor party established power in North Korea. From the very first days of the country's existence, it has known no other governance or way of life than socialism. In addition to the USSR, Communist China also provided support to the country. The state structure of the DPRK. From the very beginning of their existence, communist and socialist countries have faced resistance from other systems of government. For example, there was an iron curtain over the USSR. Such different ideological systems, socialism and capitalism, could not help but conflict. Open borders would mean their mutual penetration, mutual influence, and the gradual establishment of the same order across all open territories. Therefore, all socialist countries, to some extent, guarded their line, preventing the infiltration of Western values. In North Korea, excessively revealing clothing is still not worn today, and the main value is considered to be constructive labor. Thanks to the wife of the current leader of the country, Kim Jong-un, the requirements for women's suits have been relaxed. Women have been allowed to wear jeans, suits, high-heeled shoes, earrings, and also to ride bicycles. Previously, a woman could be fined for improper dress. Opinions about the modern ideology of the DPRK are contradictory. The constitution of the country states that it is a socialist. Power belonging to the working people, peasants, workers, and the working intelligentsia. According to Russian Korea expert Andrei Lenkov, in today's world, power indeed belongs to a layer of high-ranking party officials, and the modern system effectively represents a quasi-feudal monarchy, a structure in which the form of government is republican in name only, but in reality, power is held by one individual who passes on their authority by inheritance. Initially, the country was ruled by one dynasty for its birth, Kim Il-sung, then his son Kim Jong-il, and later his grandson Kim Jong-un. None of them held the position of their predecessor. However, they occupied positions that granted extensive powers and were surrounded by a cult of personality. The strict isolation can be explained by the desire of the top leaders to maintain power in their hands. Probably everyone knows that the DPRK is the most isolated country. One of the reasons for which is Jush the National Communist State Ideology of North Korea. Another reason for self-isolation is the country's state ideology, which is a unique blend of Marxism and Confucianism. Jush was developed by Kim Il-sung after World War II and enshrined constitutionally. This is a rather complex synthetic system of views for Western thinking. The main tenets are as follows. First, the driving force behind the development of society is the people. However, this does not mean literal equality. On the contrary, there is a hierarchy in which leaderism is the norm. The main goal of the economy is not personal gain, but the satisfaction of the population and the entire country as a whole. Great attention is paid to the development of national pride and dignity, a country where every member of society respects themselves and feels respected. Unconditional loyalty to the leader is the cementing force of society. Revolution is an extremely broad concept and even pertains to labor. Sixth, one of the most important values is the protection of one's independence. Seventh, the army is not against the people. People are the army. From Jusha's viewpoint, the country's isolation is not fear but self-sufficiency and a desire to preserve its uniqueness. Now we will tell you about the most horrifying factors in the DPRK. What will happen to your family if you commit a crime in North Korea? First, there is a punishment of three generations. This means that when a person is sent to prison, their entire family goes with them. This means that when a person is sent to prison, their entire family goes with them, and the next two generations of the family are born in prisons and live their lives there. This fact is absolutely horrifyingly true. 
and you can read about what it means to be a second generation in the book Escape from Camp 14. If you are wondering what a North Korean must do to end up in one of these prison labor camps, the answer is, simply put, simple. Political crime. Political crime is understood as criticism of the government or an attempt to escape from the country. Second, six-day work week and an additional day for forced volunteer work ensure that the average citizen indeed has practically almost no free time. This fact occasionally and sometimes appears on the internet, but its original source is unknown. However, one can easily learn a bit about how workplaces are organized in North Korea. It seems that everyone is automatically given a job by the government after high school and is assigned to that job for life. There are also other jobs in state-run companies where one can earn foreign currency as well. But it is impossible to get there without a bribe. Bree, did you know earlier that in North Korea, the production, storage, and consumption of marijuana is completely legal and recommended by the Ministry of Health as a healthier alternative to tobacco? Surprisingly, but it's absolutely true 100% and actually even more than that. Marijuana is not the only drug that is legal in North Korea. The government encourages people to grow opium on land that they do not use. As for the marijuana plants that grow freely along the roadside, it turns out that marijuana is often planted along the railway tracks to support the rails with their deep roots. Fourth, according to official documents, Kim Jong-il learned to walk at the age of three weeks. During his studies at the university, Kim also, according to official documents, wrote 1,500 books, including six major operas. According to his official biography, all of his operas are the best in the history of music. Next are his sports achievements in 1994. Pyongyang Media reported that when Kim first visited a golf club, he brilliantly completed 38 holes. 11 of them in one stroke. All of this was witnessed by 17 personal bodyguards. After that, he decided to retire from sports permanently. Kim did not just take sports competitions seriously. It is alleged that the North Korean football team was publicly ridiculed for six hours following their defeat in the 2010 FIFA World Cup. It's generally better not to play football in this country. The success rate of this country's space program is 20%. This is a very strange statistical figure, as it is unclear what success is being referred to. We believe this relates to satellite launches, as out of the five launches conducted by North Korea, only one successfully reached orbit. However, the North Korean government claims that there is another satellite that was sent into orbit in 1998 and is currently transmitting patriotic songs into space. For science, presumably, you probably think that, indeed, after the end of World War II, concentration camps no longer exist. If so, then unfortunately you are mistaken. Six, in the concentration camp in North Korea, 50,000 men, women, and children are held, used as slaves, tortured, and subjected to experiments, much like during the Holocaust. The number cited here is taken from an Amnesty International report from the 1990s. A former guard who defected from North Korea suggested that approximately about 2,000 people die from starvation each year in the Kaoryong concentration camp. However, the number of inhabitants remains constant at 50,000, thanks to an equal number of newly elected prisoners. The same guard estimated that approximately 30% of the prisoners have physical deformities, such as missing limbs. All teachers, in the 1990s had to be able to play the accordion and they had to pass an accordion exam before receiving their teaching certificate. This is a fact taken from the 2009 book Nothing to Envy, which described the lives of six North Koreans over a period of more than 15 years among them was a school teacher. Her accordion exam was postponed due to the death of Kim Jong-il. And while she did not take the exam, she worked as a caregiver in a kindergarten. The city, created to attract people, is actually just boxes without windows or interiors. Ki Chongdong is a propaganda city that was built by Kim Jong-il's father in the 1950s on the border of the country. It was supposed to showcase the superiority of the North over the South and inspire people to desert from the South to the North. But in fact, there were no residents there. Government spent heavily, and all efforts were made to create the appearance of a functioning city, including lights on the streets. It was simply enough to look through high-quality optics to expose the city, whose glass buildings were essentially just boxes, with a complete lack of any interior. The city also houses the largest flagpole in the world. In addition to empty buildings, 
North Korea also had loudspeakers that broadcast propaganda to its southern neighbors. They, in turn, repaid in kind. Fortunately for everyone, both sides agreed to put an end to this in 2004. What do you think should be saved first, besides yourself, in the event of a fire or another emergency situation in North Korea? Ninth, the idol worship in North Korea is such that the portrait of Kim Jong-il is the second thing that citizens are usually expected to save in case of a fire after themselves. There are even special bunkers for statues in case of war. It is hard to say for sure about the paintings, but the absolute truth is that all the statues of the leaders are guarded by armed forces, just like the real leaders of the country. Even we, with our worship of cats, haven't gone that far. And North Korea, it is not the year 2022, it is currently the 111th year, because North Korea counts the years from the birth of Kim Jong-il, not Jesus. And what about the things that happened before Kim Jong was born? 11. Literacy in North Korea is defined by the ability to write Kim Jong-il. This may be true, and it is explained by the fact that in North Korea, according to their data, 99% of the population is literate, it is obvious that almost no one believes this statistical figure. But the education system in North Korea includes 11 years of compulsory education. Thus, it is indeed possible that the average North Korean can indeed read and write. Execution by mortar, you ask. Why not indeed? Well, it's simply terrible, isn't it? Yes, execution by mortar shell is used in North Korea, and that is a fact, but it is not particularly widespread. It was used against one of the highest state officials who did not actually wait long enough to, in fact, throw a party after the death of Kim Jong-il, and was executed for not observing the proper morning. The Constitution of North Korea states that citizens are guaranteed freedom of speech, press, voice, demonstrations, and associations. This is certainly true, and you can even read the North Korean Constitution if you want. If you think this indeed challenges reality, you are completely incorrect, but the document also contains some buts that may seem not very democratic to foreigners. For example, citizens must firmly safeguard the political and ideological unity and solidarity of the people, and work is a noble duty and honor for a citizen. The economy of North Korea was larger than that of South Korea until 1970s. Currently, the GDP is only 2.5% of that of South Korea. The economy of North Korea is even smaller than its own shadow. In 2011, the estimated GDP per capita was about 1,800 US dollars per year, which is slightly less than, say, in South Korea, where the GDP per capita is approximately $30,800. On the other hand, we assume that there is indeed not much that can be bought. North Korea. North Korea holds elections every five years, in which only one candidate is listed on the ballots. This fact hardly seems surprising. Although we must acknowledge that while there is effectively only one candidate for any position in the government, it is important to note that voters can technically veto the candidate. This means they can vote against someone by crossing out their name in the process. But to do this, the voter must enter a special booth where everyone can see what choice he is making. Do not doubt. His name is already on the blacklist. In every country, the number of internet users has long surpassed a million, but not here, 16th. In North Korea, the number of internet users is only 605. Use of computers and the internet seems to be growing every day, although it is mainly limited to high-ranking officials and students. For example, North Korea recently debuted its own operating system called Red Star, which is based on Linux. Furthermore, some even say that North Korea is undergoing a digital revolution. Although on such a small scale, we think the word deviation would be more appropriate than revolution. However, it was allegedly claimed that North Koreans are contributing to developing various software for everyone, from different Middle Eastern banks to Nintendo and Sony and other companies. Let's just say that we are, for instance, a bit skeptical about this. The closed nature of North Korea is unlikely to be explained by a simple list of reasons. Partially, this is still a process of rethinking the legacy of the past, and partially it is ideology. In recent years, there have been trends toward the relaxation of the strict regime. Kim Jong-un, who took over the country in 2012, immediately began a series of economic reforms aimed at attracting foreign investment and encouraging the role of private business. However, despite all this, the standard of living in North Korea leaves much to be desired. Write in the comments what you would definitely like to change about the structure of the DPRK. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us likes. Thank you all for watching. We wish you a pancake mood and see you next time.